So now, careful what you say. Am I am I muted now? No, you're not. Okay, I'm back. Good. Carol? All right, now, now we have a, a quorum. Dan is not, Dan might not make it. He has a, uh, he's at, at a wake, I guess, and it'll depend on how long the, the line, waiting line is. Okay, I wonder if it was that firefighter. That's where Donna is too. Was the, oh. I, when I drove on High Street, there's a big thing going on up there. Oh. Hi, Carol. Hi. <laughs> Unmute myself and then go back to mute. Okay. How's everybody? Good. How Good. are you? Good. Okay. And Julie, what do you... you going to need to leave by like 9 nine fifteen or something or yeah around then to get downtown in time okay so we we'll... don't see any way this meeting is going to go that late right, right. i don't right. hope not we we do get into uh into long discussions on you know why sometimes we do sometimes but let's not do that tonight yeah <laughs> hey you're in charge that's what they say. Hey, Ron's here. Hi, Ron. Gretchen here. Hi, Paul. Hey. Gretchen's here. Where is she? No, I don't see Gretchen yet. Oh, she has technically two minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, look, it's top of Carol's head. Yay. <laughs> All right, I'll move the computer. I will start 6.45. Hopefully Gretchen's on by then. In the meeting's being recorded already, so we're good to go. Okay. Oh, I gotta pull up. Tom's there, Lisa's there. All right. All right. Close enough. All right. Let's bring this meeting to order. This is the uh, July 7th, 2021, New River Conservation Commission meeting uh, taking place on the Zoom platform. This meeting is being recorded. Uh, first item on the agenda are approval of, the, approval of the meeting minutes from June 15th. So today is July 6th. Did I say June? You said 7th. Oh. Oh, okay, because I'm, I'm reading off the agenda. All right, sorry, July 6th. Well, I guess uh, the agenda's wrong. Wasn't it June 15th? It no, was, but, but the agenda. Oh, the, oh, the agenda. I'm sorry that there's the wrong date on there. Sorry about that. Um, thanks for correcting, Steve. Um, so do we have any uh, comments or anything for the June 15th minutes? Motion to approve. Second. All right, roll call. Paul Healy. Yes. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Ron DeCola. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, next item, uh, Plum Island updates. Do we have any Plum Island updates? Um, I don't have any updates. There are no MRBA meetings scheduled that I know of right now. I was out on the island today um, on Long Reservation Terrace, and there continues to be more erosion um, in that area. Even, I mean, we have had some 
some rough rainy weather lately. Um, but we hopefully will get by this Hurricane Irma or Tropical Storm Irma at the end of the week without too much additional damage. Yeah, no, that's it's it's uh, current path is pretty much right over us at this point. So, um, all right. Um, is the course we, still uh, in in uh, everything still on schedule to do this winter? Uh, as far as I know, everything is still on schedule with the core. Yeah. Right. Um, do we want to? Maybe we can discuss the uh, meeting with land stewardship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you want to give an update on that? Yeah, we uh, met. What day did we meet them? I remember what day was we, it? Uh, Wednesday. Yeah, um, with the with land stewardship, land stewardship Inc. Right. Yep. Um, to discuss uh, management of uh, our open space and and trails and everything and. Uh, even though they're based out in Western Mass, the, uh, I guess he's the owner uh, of the company, uh, seemed pretty excited to uh, come out and look at what we were, what we had and um, thought it was a pretty good possibility that uh, they might be able to, to manage uh, our open space, um, which is, which is great. We, we need to, discuss uh or the city needs to discuss prices with them uh, but uh you know i don't know if are they talking like once a month coming out mm -hmm. potentially uh, there may be it may be a little bit more intense the first year while they get sort of started up with all of our um properties and processes but then maybe just a once a month thing or even just seasonally yeah. it could be quarterly i think once yeah a month. yeah, yeah. Yeah, Steve, and, uh, these, Steve, these were the folks you met out at the property. No, this is this is a um, the guy that I met was just interested in diversity of pollinators, bees, and things. Uh, and he was willing to help us, you know, determine what to use out there. Whereas these guys would be doing mowing and trail maintenance and whatever else we and monitoring of CRs and that sort of stuff. Yeah, they they would handle contractors and everything that would be doing the mowing and and maybe the um the trail maintenance and all that i don't think the the wooded trail maintenance doesn't you don't need a lot of uh time and effort yeah. out there um but i guess they didn't they know companies that just did trail maintenance yeah I, I think so and we sort of divided it up into three tiers of work that we need, the, the, the highest priority being just oversight of our largest open spaces and the management and maintenance of those, the mowing and the, the scheduled um, maintenance of the big open spaces. And that would maybe even include the new one on Colby Farm Lane. That's sort of our tier one project for them. And then the next level down would be um, monitoring of the conservation restrictions that we have. Um, which are fewer and that, that wouldn't be as much work necessarily for them, but we could get a re we get them on sort of like a cycle of getting the reports and getting the monitoring done. And then the third tier would be the trails um, oversight and management and maintenance of the trails. Would their payment come from our budget or was, did the city have to approve it? it? It could potentially be a combination of things. It could be a little bit from the commission's budget, but we wouldn't want to really create like an operating budget out of our funds because we don't acquire that much funding on a regular basis, but we could do maybe some of the upfront um, cost and then hopefully get something into the city budget as an operational um, cost every year. But we have to first determine how much that's gonna be. And sometimes these things are hard to, you know, get acceptance of when it's a new budget item, get the council to vote on it and things like that. So it's definitely probably gonna be an uphill climb, but it's worth looking into. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Definitely. Um, and I'm sure we could we could manage a, a good portion of it, if not all of it, the first year. Mm -hmm. um, just like Julie said, we don't we don't have a steady flow of income. So e even though it has been accumulating, it's a it's a finite finite thing, incremental thing. Um, 
Yeah, and they they also they're they're well aware of uh, folks that they what it, do you term it as a the uh, alpha volunteer. Oh yeah, yeah, right. As we have out on the uh, the bike trail, uh, so it it that's a common uh, common situation apparently. Um, but uh, so we're gonna we're meeting. They're coming out. I have my calendar up. Um, in, in August. I forget the date off the top of my head. August 4th. August 4th. Okay. Um, and this week I'm getting them some just some additional details and data on our properties, on our conservation properties. And in, in the office, I'm working with Diane um, Gobert, our office manager, to get an accounting of like how much um, income the Conservation Commission generates on an annual basis, so that if there is some sort of sustainable amount that we could put towards this every year, um, that we'd know what that is without having to, you know, get into eating away at our. Uh -huh. basic you know, that's that's really in our. Uh, it's really use for our budget, uh, mm -hmm. for our money. Um, we just don't. It's not like we're Cambridge or something. Of course, Cambridge Cambridge would just pay for all of it anyways. They just pay it. They have more money. Pay as you go. Yeah. Do um, we have to get bids from a couple different places, or do we can we just go with them if you're happy with what they propose? Um, that's a good question. Um, well, actually, I think that there it's not when it when there's a situation where there aren't more than one or two firms or outfits that do what you need, then you don't have to get the three bids. Yeah. Um, and that may be the situation that we're in in this case, but we'll have to look into that when it, we when we get a cost figure from them, see whether it crosses, crosses any of those thresholds. Yeah. Well, hopefully that'll- one, one, one more question. So that August 4th meeting, will that be something that we will all participate on? In? Yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, it's it's a site visit or site visits, um, so yeah, okay. um, we're all good on that. Yeah, we'll let you know more when we get a little bit more detail from them. Like they're going to give us a cost proposal and some additional details, and then we can talk about it again. Okay, thank you. Yeah, that, and uh, we're currently scheduled. Where's August fourth? There it is at ten thirty a.m. to meet with them. Wherever we're going to meet with them, I don't know where we're going to meet with them. All right, then let's uh, get on to the agenda. Um, <clears throat> the first item is a Klaus and Sue Kaiser, 19 Francis Drive, request for minor modification. Um, so they're not going to be here, but Sue Kaiser did send an email out. Uh, this afternoon, um, and I'm going to read it, and we're, then we're going to decide whether we want to um, uh, continue uh, to the next meeting or not. Um, she's responding to Julia's uh, question about what's going what's going on with them, and she's saying, uh, "Hello, Julia. My apologies. I do remember your email and thought we were meeting. The meeting was next week." We have been a bit crazy here with family stuff. We just got back from Vermont last night. Tonight's gonna to be tough to do, so they're not gonna be here. As for the questions, the patio is within the initial planned and approved deck. We are using uh, techno block stone and crushed stone. There's no issue with trees or vegetation as it is in the same area as the deck and was, was to be where the deck was to be and as far away from the Waddle slash hay um, and uh, curtain as the deck had planned to be. Uh, talking about the erosion control. Please let me know if you need any additional information and or if there is another time we would need to talk. Uh, we need to talk, that would work. Uh, thank you, Sue Kajer. Um, so I don't know if that answers uh, folks' questions. Um, whether we want to decide tonight or, or continue it to uh, the next meeting. 
I can't recall. Did we have a, a drawing that was? Uh, yes, following yep, we did. There? And I'll pull that up right now. Sorry. Um, here it is. And so you can see in the back of the house, this is where a large um, multi-level deck was to be constructed. And in the middle here, these Julia, stairs. Julia, can you rotate that on? Sure. Yep, you're right. It's upside down. Yep. Um, Okay. There we go. So these are stairs that go actually, this is sort of like a bulkhead. They go down to their basement. And then on either side around this sort of low area is a deck and there's two, there were to be two levels. What they've asked to do is take this side over here closest to the, um, the buffer zone, the no disturb zone. And instead of having it be a deck, they want they want it to be the patio, a patio instead. It just didn't make sense to have these sort of like upper level, lower level deck um, when they already have something at ground level in the middle. They just decided to keep this part over here also at ground level as a stone patio. And the question that came up last time, they weren't at the meeting last time either. The questions that came up last time were, well, what is it gonna be? What is it gonna consist of? Is it gonna be pervious or impervious? Are any of the trees that were supposed to be um, saved on site back here in the buffer zone, are they going to be disturbed um, by the patio as opposed to the um, deck, et cetera? So those, but they weren't there to answer them, which is why the um, meeting was continued. And as she said, I believe that they're not going any further out at all with the patio than they were proposing to go with the deck. Um, so, the, and there won't be any sort of um, footings as there would be with the deck, but it will be uh, you know, on the ground. I think one of the other questions was, were they gonna have to excavate anything to put out, down some kind of foundation for the patio and would that affect tree roots, et cetera? So, um, I did see, see Mary Rimmer, who is their environmental consultant on this project on both of the emails. And I don't think she responded. I think Sue just responded. Is that right? No. Yeah, I, I don't remember anything from Mary Rimmer. No. So in her email that you got today, there was detail on the materials for the patio. Yep. Yeah, we're using techno block stone and crushed stone. Okay. Yeah, the, well, that's probably the techno block, assuming it's it's like patio blocks, it may, it's probably going on top of crushed stone. So they're, they're probably gonna have to excavate a little bit for that. So I know when I put up my shed, they had to go out, down like 10 inches or something mm -hmm. uh, for the, uh, for this crushed stone. I'm okay with what they're gonna do. No, okay. I'm okay with it. Yeah, it seems pretty minor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And my guess is those those trees back there are so large that any um, impact to some of those roots from the excavation at that shallow level shouldn't really hurt the, the tree very much. Okay. Anybody else have any comments or concerns? Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the minor modification. I'll second that. Roll call, Paul Healy. Yes. Steve Moore. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Ron DeCola. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. And I vote yes. Okay. Very good. Excuse me. Next item is uh, Louisa Tanner and John Watkins, 260 Northern Boulevard, request for determination. And I see Lisa okay. Mead is Two. up there. I vote Tom Hughes, two panelists, and Lisa Mead, two panelists. Good evening. Hi, Tom. Hi. Um, so Tom Hughes with Hughes Environmental Consulting. Um, 
here on behalf of uh, Louisa and Jack. Um, at the last hearing, I think we resolved that there were no environmental issues. It was really about the um, substantial improvement stuff. And uh, you guys asked Julia to check in with the assessor and have her review the submission. And that's been done. And I think Julia can confirm that the uh, assessor has confirmed that our um, that our review was valid and uh, and agrees with the overall methodology used. So I think I think at that point we would ask that you guys issue a negative determination tonight. Yeah, I think that was that was really our only issue. Um, I I'm good with the uh, the assessor's good with it. I'm good with it. Yeah, I mean, I'm feeling like they did what we asked them to do, and this is how it came out. I, I personally think in the future, uh, not necessarily this one. I mean, it was clearly that 25% was taken care of, but I, I think we might want to get our own uh, uh, assessor or appraiser at this point and even talk to the assessor about how she came about this so that uh, the next time... Uh, we understand this a little bit more. It seemed kind of arbitrary to me in some way, but um, I can't argue about uh, they did what we asked. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, I, I was, you know, back in the beginning uh, of the water sewer project and we had to do all this limitation. Uh, I know that we as a, a, a commission spent a lot of time talking about discussing what's what's a substantial improvement and we had all different kinds of measurements going on and nothing was really, there wasn't any good way to do it and then i think finally the when the city council got to doing the ordinance that's when they came up with this alternate way of using the appraiser to judge whether it's substantial improvement and at that time we felt that for us to define substantial improvement any differently than the building department would use it, uh, we'd have to have some, you know, real good reasons to do that and and real impacts uh, to the to the resource area, and, and we just didn't have one. So so we have been for quite a few years now, pretty much going uh, by the simpler method of. Uh, of of determining substantial improvement. Uh, you know, this is a case that is very different than any we'd seen before. And so, you know, I certainly understand the hesitance on our part to um, just go with it, but I, I, re I, I don't see a feasible choice or alternative. Yeah, I still have some, <clears throat> some questions about, you know, just it seems like assumption upon assumption it's you know the conclusion is not consistent with my own personal experience whether it be an assessed value or a real property value in the retail market uh, for renovations like the ones described in this application so i i'm not sure i will ever feel comfortable with it um, and that's just how i feel about it <clears throat> That's fine. Yeah. Um, anybody, anybody else uh, have any comments or questions? Do we know whether there's other cities and towns that use the same criteria that we do in terms of the 25%, 50% calculation, or is that just us? Well, probably Newberry too, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Newberry too, but outside of Plum Island, I'm not sure anyone does this um, as part of the Conservation Commission ordinance, um, the way we do it. There, the, there may be a, um, a process for looking at substantial improvements through, the, um, through other permitting processes, through the, you know, the building permit process, um, but they strictly use, I believe, um, building costs versus assessed value. Whereas in our ordinance, we also allow this choice of if you don't wanna use the building costs versus assessed value, you can use uh, two appraisals. Um, 
for pre-construction and post-construction um, market value. And it just opens up this bag of worms where then we have to review those appraisals. And in cases like this one, didn't seem to make sense and we're not familiar enough with those methodologies to, um, to feel you know, confident about it. But having the check, um, having the double check by the assessor's office was helpful. It gave us, um, you know, it's not apples to apples necessarily because they're looking at assessed value and this is appraised value, but the order of magnitude of their projected increase in the value of that one structure versus what the appraisal showed as the increase in value of that one structure weren't so far off from each other. Um, and neither of them were close to 50%. So, so I, I feel like that was why we didn't move forward with a, um, or at least haven't yet moved forward with a more um, comprehensive peer review with another outside appraiser. Yeah, I mean, my understanding from talking to a valuation expert, he's more on the business side, is that you know you can use different methods to get to different results, and there's probably a way to get to to value this property to get to a different result. But I'm not sure that we're in the position to to keep doing that. So I would agree, you know, that it doesn't feel totally comfortable. But I think we're we kind of have to go with what we have. Seems. Unless yeah. We're, I'm sorry. No, no. I was gonna say unless we're willing to insist that they get a second. Um, or do we get a peer review, so. Um, do we have the ability to, we do have the ability to change this in the future. And I know we did discuss um, cumulative projects and uh -huh. how that might impact us or even a situation where somebody's gonna all of a sudden have to replace a roof because it's in poor condition or something. And, you know, we still have some holes in this thing. And uh, I think we should probably maybe along with bringing in a consultant, see how we want this thing to, to pan out. Yeah, well, with regards to uh, future, talking about the regulations. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah agree. No, I we need to revisit that. Yeah. But it's what we have now, so. Yeah, I think even if we did go out and get a peer review, we're so off, far off from the 50% of what we have. I don't think we'd, yeah, even with a peer review, or, you know, I don't think we're going to get to that. So we, there's no point in, in my mind, pursuing a, a peer review. Well, but, except the fact that if we looked at how much it costs to do what they're doing and, and did it that way, I think we'd be. Um, there's a very good chance, especially with the construction the way it is now, that they are over 50%. Yeah, yeah con construction costs versus a, a assessed value would put them in a whole different ballpark. Right. Well, I just saw something today that the cost of lumber has come down 40%. So. Yeah, it, it, this, it, it's kind of an aberration. Yeah. Not kind of, it, it's a serious aberration now. So... I do think that there are enough questions around this 25%, 50% rule, though, that we should have a discussion with the planning office about ways that we might want to tighten up or at least clarify the way these regs are being used and interpreted. Um, I need to make some changes. And I think we should start looking at that. Yeah, I agree. Okay. I, would, I would agree. And I, you might even want to, I don't know if at what point you would bring in the Council that represents Newbury Fort to, to also analyze the language. I'm not sure yep. how your process works on that, but we can do that. Copeland and Page, we can ask them for help with that. Yeah. But we have the we have this uh, RDA in front of us um, at this point. So, uh, do we have anything else? Uh, oh, uh, th th there wasn't any other reason or anything that would make this require a uh, notice of intent rather than RDA. You know, in this particular case, they are not expanding the footprint on the ground. So they're increasing square footage by adding some area um, over existing decks and existing sort of landings and things like that. Um, the living space um, that they're adding, though, will not increase the footprint on the ground. 
Yeah. So, okay. and they're not making any changes to the landscaping. Um, although the landscaping could benefit from some changes being made to it because much of it is not in compliance with our regs. Um, they're not proposing any changes. That's why they applied for an RDA. Is this a negative two or a negative three? I forget what. Yeah. Um, depends on if you have conditions. Yeah, I don't. I don't know if we have any conditions on this one. I don't think we talked about any. No. So it'd be, I, I think it'd be negative two. I'll make a motion for a negative two determination. Do I hear a second? I'll second. <laughs> um, so roll call. Paul Healy? Yes. Steve Moore? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Mondacola? No. Carol Wagon? Yes. And I'll vote yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Juan, you're like me on so many other uh, votes. Uh, it just didn't feel right to me. <clears throat> That's fine. No, that good. That's good. <laughs> Plenty of those that didn't feel right to me either. All right. Um, can I get a motion to open the public hearings? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, all right, next item is uh, Lorraine and Michael Riley, 2 Spofford Street. Uh, amend the uh, order conditions. Good evening. Tom Hughes with Hughes Environmental Consulting. Um, uh, you guys may recall this is a project um, by the uh, by the bridge uh, house replacement, and as part of the original permit, we had to submit a landscape plan. In developing the landscape plan, um, the uh, the design incorporated some patios and a little bit of hardscape, and also reoriented the driveway slightly to make it easier to turn around. Um, as a result. We filed an amendment. Um, we've notified abutters, run the legal ad. Um, and what you see in front of you is the um, updated site plan and the green areas that you see are the areas that then you refer to the actual landscape plan for the plantings and all that. Um, and you can see the turnaround area for the driveway. Um, the way it was previously configured, you had to come out of the garage and turn around and almost pull up next to the garage to pull out, um, which proved to be uh, kind of too awkward to make work. If we can go to the next page, Julia. So um, within the riverfront area, these are all natives. We included uh, mitigation trees that were part of the, uh, the original proposal. And I think a minor revision that occurred to remove a couple trees after the approval was issued. Um, it's fairly busy. I think the like the only thing within the inner riparian was originally shown as a path down to the dock that just kind of details the flat stone uh, approach that would be used. Um, and uh, there's just a little bit of the patio area and plantings. Um, you could see plantings around the, uh, the sunken fire pit that just kind of just clips that inner riparian a little bit. Um, the patios are within areas that are pre-existing lawn and they are generally considered exempt under uh, the minor activities section of the regs. Um, and if we can go up kind of the top right of the plan, you can see the uh, planting list. And uh, the way the plan has been done, we have separated out the areas that were within the riparian zone and the areas that were not because outside of the riparian zone, we do have some non-natives, but not aggressive plants, things like Kusa dogwood, et cetera. And if we can zoom in on that uh, plant list, you can see there's an awful lot of uh, really nice natives going in. 
We've got red cedar, river birch, um, maple, um, white pine, inkberry, winterberry, holly, mountain laurel, bayberry, um, you know, steeple bush, high bush, blueberry. Uh, this is a lot more in terms of uh, shrubby plantings and uh, and trees, I think, than we committed to when we came in to do the permitting. But um, ultimately, they built a beautiful home and they want to have uh, nice landscaping to go with it. And you can see where we've differentiated the areas um, not within, they call it a wetland restriction area, but that's basically the riverfront area. And again, shrubs not within it. Um, and again, they're not, they're not harmful plants. They're just a little bit more exotic um, or just not pure natives uh, that are down in that section. But anyhow, so we'd like to ask you guys to approve the amendment and yeah. um, they're finally wrapping up the house itself and would like to start really uh, going after the landscape now. Okay, um, I just wanted to make one note. I think I did it in the original notice of intent. Uh, I have good friends who are abutters uh, just to the north, well, northwest, I guess, on this. Okay. For the record. Yeah, I don't know if it's the same person, but one of the abutters sent me a, a really fantastic drone photo. Of it was the, that, that's them. Yeah, the weather vane out over the bridge, just beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, I should have asked him permission to share it with you guys tonight, but uh, anyway. Tom, did you give me the um, additional square footage number for impact to riverfront area on this? So I can put it in the amendment. Um, I don't think I did. And, and if you remember, this is one that we have um, degraded riverfront and the proposed, so it's it's a combination of 10.58.5 and 10.58.4. I'd have to have Millennium do the calculation and then we'd have to make sure we remove from that the exempt parts, the patio and the, the stonework and all that. Well, but is, I mean, are they exempt in terms of the calculations for impacts for the Wetlands Protection Act? Yeah, like, yeah, form? because they, yeah, because they could go in without a permit because they're exempt. So they don't, they don't count in they the- They don't count uh, it as impact area right right yeah so i can follow up i have to get millennium to give me the full-on calcs and and it's it's fairly so is complex. it just then is it just the the added driveway area that you're looking at for additional yeah area? it's the added driveway and then and then we have to um back out the degraded stuff to get the full the okay. full number but i can do that and give you a okay an accounting we kind of simplified it in the original noi but now that we've got all this um all the patios and everything we have to we have to go through and get you the numbers okay. so we'll get you those numbers if that's okay we can get them to you um, mm -hmm. as fast as millennium can get me the calcs okay. okay um we have questions oh hi dan hi joe how are you doing Good, how are you? Thank you. So I, I lost my internet connection there for a minute and missed the discussion about the driveways. Okay. Tom, could you just? Yeah, so so um, if you can see the garage, what, yeah. what was there before was a driveway kind of coming straight out and then it hooked over around to the left of the garage for the turnaround which just means you end up having to do almost a you know a five point turn or a six point turn to turn a vehicle around and in that location with the bridge right there um it just when it when it started falling into place on the ground itself um it became really clear that that design was extremely awkward um and just would have been fairly painful whereas this design allows you to back out of the garage back onto that um onto that area that you see down there. Um, brick, that's the brick square. Area. Yeah, the brick area. And then turn out and kind of pull out uh, nose first onto Spofford. Okay. So, so it's what, really what, pretty what much- the, What's the change, Tom? The brick area is- the Yeah, the, the brick area and then that little kind of way it nubs into the brick area. Okay, got it. 
a pretty large area to do this. I mean, uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I back out of my garage all the time. It's nothing like that. Yeah, I mean, keep the scale on this is, um, I think this is done at a, is this a 10 scale or a 20? This, this might be a 20. Um, I don't think that's much bigger than 20 by 20. The garage, the garage is a little bit, um, is fairly small in context of the overall house. But yeah, we can, I can get the numbers to Julia on that part. Um, Julia, um, those numbers would have an impact on the ability for this to be approved? Well, yeah, I mean, you can only impact 5,000 square feet of riverfront area. This would, I believe Tom said this would still be below that, right? Or 10% of the riverfront area on your site. Yeah, so, so and since this is degraded, DEP has this weird hybrid approach. When you say degraded, what yeah, do you so, mean? I mean, there, there was just so a the, house. There right, there. right. So the house and the, there was concrete around the house and there were, there were certain features that under 1058.5, constitute degraded riverfront. So at the time the Rivers Act was passed, those areas were essentially, you were given credit for those areas under 1058.5. And so you're allowed to basically take credit for those and then apply 1058.4. But compared so, to what we have here now, that was much, right. no, much no, the, smaller right. footprint, yeah. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. But, but, so, but the net change is definitely way less than five. I think our total below was less than five um, without subtracting out the degraded. Uh, but what I can do, I have to get the numbers and I just don't have, Millennium did not go through and calculate it. Yeah, everything. I mean, we, do we even have like a square footage aside from the degraded versus non-degraded and impact of riverfront area? Do you have a, a, an additional square footage of impervious surface <laughs> over what was pre-existing, over what I'm, was approved? Total, um, including patios and everything like that. I don't have it. I don't have it, including the patios. I'm guessing, looking at this, uh, that we're in the range of about 500 square feet addition for the uh, for the turnaround. For the turnaround. Right. Yeah, but in terms of and the patio areas, they they are exempt and don't count because they're they're you know technically. Well, they 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 may be exempt, but that doesn't mean they don't count in some way. Um, to the commission. Right. No, we can, and we can get those, we can get those numbers. John, I'd like to see um, uh, more consideration for a, a pervious paver. I mean, you're right, you're right on the river and you're adding, you know, a significant area of, of impervious, you know, that's gonna be flowing, you know, untreated into the river. Right. Well, in terms of, um, there is a hundred feet of lawn there between the, uh, all, all of that work mm -hmm. and the river. So there's an awful lot of area that is pervious that will, will both treat and infiltrate. Um, I know that I talked to, that was one of the things when we were deciding about minor revision versus amendment. Um, Julie had indicated that if they were um, pervious, then we, you know, maybe some of the patios could have been done as minor. Um, but the, uh, they wanted to use bluestone and some, some things that are, uh, much more resilient and, and, uh, and sustainable, but, but again, they're harder to make as, uh, as impervious. If we were to do some type of like gravel edging around the outside of them with that, be something that would that would be acceptable well i'd just like to see uh some consideration for that what what they come up with for a plan you know i'd, okay. I'd see it before making a decision on it okay but uh you know getting that water into the ground as quickly as possible seems like a prudent uh idea right okay mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah it's sort of a best best practices in this type of a environment so let's see yeah i mean and and i think a lot of this is up in the flat at the top um really the fire pit area is is the only significant area that is near the near the slope and i can uh i know matt bailey's on tonight but it sounds like we have to get you guys some calculations and i'll have to work with him on uh on how we can maybe 
provide some water management in that um, in that area there, uh, and in any of the other areas where we can do it. Yeah, I know the the gravel edging would not be a bad idea. I, on on my uh, paver driveway, we put in a uh, an area of uh, it was more stone. It's stone more than gravel, but it it seems right. to have worked really well to to uh, handle runoff off the driveway. Right, and and a lot of I mean, there's not a huge amount of additional patios right now. There there are we are adding patios, but a lot of what you also see are wall features because the the grade changes on the other side of the structure and trying to make the grade changes kind of work better. Um, so there's not an awful lot of, of new uh, impervious. I suppose that the turnaround for the driveway is probably the largest element. Um, but Tom, was the bluestone that's shown deck above, bluestone below, bluestones on either side of the deck, the big semicircle deck and porch, is there yep. bluestone below that as well? And was that previously? That was previously part of the approval, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so just get us some, some calculations on what's increased and, you know. Okay. Over the, yeah. over and the some, some ideas of uh, runoff management. Yep. Do we have anything else? No, so the next meeting is the 20th. 20th? Okay. Yeah, I'd like to have this wrapped up. Um, for that meeting then. I know I know that the client and, and Matt would like to really get going on the on the project yesterday. So uh, we'll get all that information into you ASAP. Okay. Okay. All right. So I guess with that we'll ask for a continuance to the next hearing. Motion to continue to July 20th. Second. Second. All right, roll call. Paul Healy? Yes. Steve Moore? Yes. Dan Warshaw? Yes. David Vine? Yes. Ron DeCola? Yes. Carol Wagon? Yes. And I vote yes. All right. Thank you. All right, next item. Next item is George Hasseltine, Winward Shaw, LLC, 357th Street, Notice of Intent. Hey, good evening. Tom Hughes with Hughes Environmental Consulting here on behalf of George Hasseltine um, with, with Winward Shaw. Uh, George is looking to do this work on behalf of um, John and Haley Siminski and uh, Lisa Mead, who's also involved in the project, I think is still on the, on the meeting. Um, so 357th Street, is um, you can't see in the photo, but if you see the lot to the left of the of the lot in the photo, right on the other side of that is Northern Boulevard. Um, the uh, AO zone clips through the uh, northwestern corner of the lot. Uh, the current house clips into the north. It, sorry, that's the no, that's northeast, north northwest. Oh, over here. Yeah. Um, so if we can go down to the, uh, probably the flood map right there. Okay, so you can see where the AO zone is located um, and the rest of the lot is AE9. Um, if we wanna to go to the site photos, this is really pretty straightforward. Um, so this is the existing structure, solid, uh, solid structure. We're clearly going over substantial improvement. There's no effort to try to save this thing. We're, we're going for full rebuild up on piles. Um, if you can see in the aerial down from my map, I mean, the site is heavily impacted right now, despite the appearance of it being all shrubby. Those are really overgrown landscape plants in front of the structure. Um, if we can, and I don't know if you can see it, but there is a bluestone patio under the table and chairs in that bottom photo. Um, and then just a whole bunch of sand around that. Uh, so if we can go down to the site plan now. Okay, that's the, let's skip past that for right now and go yeah. all the way down yeah. To, yeah, to the site plan. 
Okay, so you can see where the existing AO zone cuts through the structure. And then if you can see what we've done is we've moved the replacement structure so that it is essentially out of the AO zone. So we've shifted it to be more central in, within the lot. And, uh, and we're actually making the building itself smaller, but there is an increase in deck size. If we wanna zoom in on the impact table, that's probably the um, best way to kind of summarize what's happening here. And then we'll take a look at the landscape plan. Okay, let's see that. Hold on, where is the impact table? Um, you can see the impact table right between. Oh, sorry, right, yeah. right in between. Yep, yep. got it. Okay, so you can see the building is going down in size from 940 to 797 because we're going to have two stories. So the footprint is actually going down a bit. Um, the deck and stairs does increase quite a bit. They're adding a lot of good outdoor recreational space. Um, so it's going from 197 to 749. We're getting rid of the shed. Um, and uh, basically, we're going, the flagstone patio goes away. Uh, and in the end, we end up with um, with a net increase in vegetation of just under a thousand square feet. If you can look at that bottom line there, um, and you'll see the gravel driveway goes down to zero. But then we have a clamshell driveway and walkway shown at twelve oh five. So um, it's deceiving. You know, we are we are reducing the overall driveway size on site, but we're just changing material. Um, from gravel to, to clamshell. So if we can go to, um, beneath that is a profile view. And you can see that um, we are in the AE9. The um, grade is just about elevation nine and uh, we have hung storage at 12.5. Um, the uh, there'll be the two foot plus clear underneath the structure, and uh, you know constructed on open piles. If we can go to the landscape plan, it's up okay. page 30. Oh. Yeah, yeah, right there. Yeah, and you'll have to zoom in probably on that. Yes. Um, sorry. What's yeah, no, it's, it's an awkward page size. It gets sent to me as a, as an image file. So when I convert it to a PDF, it, uh, okay. yeah. So basically putting in a whole bunch of nice native plants, um, putting a bunch of, um, American beach grass, some viburnum, um, red cedar, beach plum, um, you know, it's it's a real nice plan and, and it really is going to soften up the site quite a bit. Um, the patio area is no longer going to be made of flagstone. It's going to be um, clamshell uh, with a cobble edging to it. And uh, there'll be some areas of sand, some areas of beach grass, you know, trying to not totally get rid of the ability to recreate in the backyard, but also, you know, putting in some nice dune grass and dune plants. It's a pretty straightforward um, home reconstruction, everything up on piles uh, and complies with, you know, the regs and the, and the Wetland Protection Act standards. Um, how high above ground is that deck, that back deck with the furniture on it? Um, I'd have to look at the, at the profile view, but it's gonna be at least the two and a half feet up. Okay, but it's not like a second floor deck. It's 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 still basically a first floor deck, yeah. just elevated above base flood. Okay. Yeah. Did I give you the 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 uh, zoning profile views? Probably not. I don't think so. Yeah. No. Um, actually, I think George is on. Uh, George, if you're out there, can you? He is. Unmute, George. Tom, I think Tom. Oh. Um. Joe is doing that. This is Lisa uh, Mead. Tom, do you don't double check the material on the driveway? I think the material is is gravel, not um, clamstone, uh, clamshell. Yeah, same, that's right, same P stone there. 
Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, I just was going based on what um, ever to put on the site plan. Yeah, it's on, but on the uh, landscape plan, sir. Okay, so I mean, either one is a compatible dune ex and acceptable material. So we would just ask that you that you allow either, um, but with the areas uh, as shown. Yeah, I believe the client would prefer um, P stone if, if that is acceptable. Yeah, we just need to have it mm -hmm. accurately. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, is that what's out there now in the driveway? It, it, I believe it's stone now. Okay. Um, George, that back deck, that's fairly low, right? Is the, existing, it, the existing deck? No, no, the proposed deck that's shown here with the uh, shade lounge. The shade lounge in the back. Is that proposed? I can pull up uh, the plans and, and show uh, what is the point you're getting at, Tom? What exactly? Oh, they're, they're just asking? asking. They're asking the elevation above, and I, I can, I can open up the. Um, the yeah, it's, it's off of the the first floor deck. Okay. Um, so you're fence, saying, yeah, go ahead. So you're saying it's it's like two and a half feet above the ground, um, at minimum, two and a half to the uh, to the underside. Of the structure, not no, the no. Can I can I correct yeah. that? I'm I'm looking at the elevations. So that's yeah. the first floor deck, which would be above the garage. So it's nine. Okay. So it's it's okay. Yeah. Okay. So it's nine feet up. So there's parking below the structure, correct? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is all elevated. Even that deck, that all of the decks are elevated above the level, like way way up no what, um, excuse me what's the elevation of the shade lounge the deck shade lounge that's you're talking about the front the upper deck what's that lower deck what's the elevation of that no it's it's also on that um goes off the first living floor right so if can you, you go can back we to see that in your profile floor? do you have a profile view yeah actually yeah. if i can share my screen um I, yeah hold on a second let me share my screen if that's okay with nine you. If I could, it's nine, looks like it's nine feet, one inch. Those I'm are looking, going down to it though. Above grade. Yeah, Julie, if it's okay, um, if you could stop sharing and allow me to share, I can pull up the elevation views from the zoning filing. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, there you go. You can see the deck here, deck yeah. here. So you can see everything's up. Yeah, so that's nine, nine one, right? Yeah, it's about nine one, nine two. What about the rear elevation plan? That's yep. front and yeah. right. Right. Yeah. So I think this is this is the set of stairs that you see there, maybe. But you can see all the decks are are substantially up in the air, except the you know the utility stuff okay. which is a little bit lower propane yeah. which is above two and two and a half feet plus above right. grade right and the um the architect you can see is labeled this two points you know two foot six minimum to the yeah. outside I, that doesn't look like the the same as the um as that floor plan is the um can you point to the shade deck, the shade lounge? It's not labeled on there. Yeah, I'm just trying to see. So this is the rear elevation. That would be, that would be this area here. Right. We just can't see the dimensions of yeah, it. Yeah, you there. can see that you can see the stairs right here that, that show on that. And um, mm -hmm. just to make it easier, let me also open up. Um, let me do this. Let me get into. I'll open all this stuff now so that we can go back and forth to everything. <clears throat> yes. All right. Can we go back to the front elevation for a minute? Yep. Can you guys see? Um, yeah. Me going through all this. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting motion sickness. All right. Sorry. Okay. You know, I'm kidding, right, Tom? Yeah, I know. 
So that front elevation shows overhead garage doors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, that. Do those go all the way down to the ground? Um, no. They're they're two feet up off the ground. You can see they stop right there. Yeah. Right here. And here. Because we see some of them out there that go all the way down to the ground. And yep. I think it is, would not be. And we, we simply leave off the last panel okay. and we'll ensure that it's at least two feet off of grade. <clears throat> right, and, and that, that, that could be conditioned. And the way that you're getting under there, the, that two feet, how are you making that up? Oh, to, to have it two feet open under here? Yeah, I mean, how, what's leading to this parking area? Oh, so so the grade. The, yeah, so the it will go back to site plan. So basically, you're pulling in here and here under the structure and under the decks. Okay. And so their garage is going to have a two and a half foot clearance where it ends, where, you know, things can get in or whatever, but sand right. supposedly, but uh, uh, okay. Yeah, David, um, stop, just like the skirting all the way around. Yeah. Right. So what's so, the surface of the area in the garage that the cars park on? Uh, that would be the same P stone. So we always, for for any driveway or whatever, it's it's usually either a pea stone or some type of, of natural aggregate material or clamshell. Um, in this case, um, I guess the landscape plan conflicts with the site plan. We would just ask that you allow either, but but it sounds like we want to do pea stone in there. Tom, can you please go back up to your landscape plan? Yep. That we're looking at before. Okay. <clears throat> Until open slot privacy screen. Where are you seeing that? Um, what's the what's the fence? I hope horizontal open slot privacy screen. I'm reading that over on the left, pointing to the fencing. Mm -hmm. Backyard fencing is it's that does that comply it's with our fence right regs? It's two and a half foot raised. Yeah. So it's open two and a half feet. Um, I have a picture of this that I could show you okay. um, if I was able to share. Yeah, I can stop sharing if um, George. Let's see if I can do this here. I apologize. I'm used to uh, Google Meet, and not Zoom. Clearly, you haven't been appearing front of Zoom. Yeah. <laughs> Where have you been? Well, that's why I have the lawyer and the consultant. <laughs> uh, I'm just looking for the button on how to share this. I apologize. On the bottom of the screen. At the yeah, very bottom. Screen. Yeah. Okay. Bottom screen. There you go. Can you see this? Hmm. Yeah. So that doesn't comply, though, with our regs. And, and why is that? Well, it's supposed to be 80% open for the first two feet above grade and then 50% open above that. So that's definitely not going to be meet the 50% open. Obviously, you've got it like nearly 100% open for the first two feet, but the upper does not meet. Can, can, can we simply add the condition that we would make it 50% open uh, above? Yeah. Okay. Well, that would be a condition. That's that's uh, part of the regulation. So it's yeah. not conditional. It's we need a picture of a, you know a diagram of your proposed fence to make sure that it would comply. So what I I agree with you, Dan. So what I would ask is that the condition be that the uh, conservation agent affirm the proposed fence prior to installation. Does that work? Mm, no. I mean, I, I disagree with that. I'd rather have them, you guys just get us a diagram of the proposed fence that meets the regs prior to issuance of the order. Okay, we can do that. That'd be better. It's just cleaner, gets in the file before construction starts and we don't have to go back and remember that we were supposed to go out next Y and Z. 
So we can bring that into you before you issue the order, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. Go back to the landscape plan. Yeah. Okay. So let me share again. Okay. So here we go. So this, I mean, we've talked about this on other projects as well, but when we're doing calculations for, you know, square footage of vegetated area versus non-vegetated and trying to not lose and maybe even improve vegetation on the island in a case like this, um, it should, this, this project should result in overall improvement for the, to the site and it looks like it's going to, but then when I look at the backyard and it's fenced off and you've got planting areas shown as like these sort of sporadic, you know, areas of here's some dune grass here and the smattering of dune grass there and here's the patio and here's some open sand. To me, that says backyard, these little four zones of, these little four sort of icons of dune grass here and those four over there and those, they're gonna get trampled and that's gonna become part of the sandy backyard adjacent to the patio area that gets just used. And so I'd rather see just to make it easier almost for everybody um, compliance wise, if you're gonna try and take credit for the plantings that are shown on the planting plan to delineate them more clearly, um, both on the plan, but also in reality on the site. So that, so that it's almost more like a garden area, that this is the planted area, this is the area that's recreation, patio, sand, et cetera. And that you have those delineated in a way that people don't get confused and then the, you lose half the vegetation that you're supposed to have in the backyard. Okay. Can I just suggest, since we're increasing vegetation the way it's currently counted by close to a thousand square feet, um, that and and we have some solid areas like this area up front, right, which is just completely planted. This is not an area with with sand. Um, would be you know if they want to plant some stuff out here and have it kind of wispy within their sand area, um, just for the look. But maybe what we do is maybe we could highlight areas that have to be vegetated for compliance. Yeah. Um, and it might be less than the thousand increase that we take credit for, but it's a significant increase in vegetation, no matter how you count this. Mm -hmm. And even if this stuff out here gets trampled over time, um, the overall benefit on site is still pretty significant. I, I like that better because it's just more clear long-term. So let's say they come back, this thing, thing gets built really fast, vegetated, and they come back in three years for their certificate of compliance. It's just clear. These were the areas that were to be planted. These are the areas that are allowed to be sort of used for the backyard recreation. You know what I mean? Yep. Just so, so much more clear. So what I'm thinking, I don't know if this will let me draw it, but like something like this corner, you know, these are pretty solidly fit planted areas so we kind of like highlight you know these different areas that would be ha have to be vegetated for compliance you know maybe something yeah. like that and then if the other ones get trampled they get trampled but it's not a compliance issue you know maybe that stripe there yeah something like that yeah it's just a waste of money otherwise <laughs> well i mean but if again they 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 had a a landscape designer go through and kind of come up yeah. with this look that they really want to have so um well that's beautiful then they should yeah. do that but i but i do think that then we need to know how to evaluate that later no totally to understood i i can yeah. i can guarantee you if i added up those areas that i just roughly highlighted um we're going to substantially increase vegetation over current conditions sure. regardless okay. so why don't we just we'll we'll do a more professional job of marking that up before you issue and get that to you and then give you a square footage associated with that. And then why don't we call that what's required for compliance? Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, and then the rest, if they want to put it in for the look and, and enjoy it, then great. Absolutely. Yeah. We just need yeah. to know what the minimum required areas are going to be. And they should know that too, in case they change their mind and decide they want to put up a jungle gym back there or, or you know, whatever else. Right, 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 right. I don't think I've ever seen a jungle gym on the island, Julia. That was just a, a great new idea. But I, I thought the same thing as soon as I said it. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, you know, I think it's one of the few things that would be fully compliant with your agency. <laughs> I know, right? Sand underneath. There was a netting jungle gym next to the parking lot for a while. 
Well, no, I know that, but I meant in a private backyard. You're right, Joe. That's true. There was. Um, do you do you have a picture of the existing cedar fence? Let's see if it's in one of the ones. Uh, let's see. In your application, yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, Solid. Yeah, yeah, you can see yeah. it right there. Yeah. That up. Well, that's the deck in the front. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Mm. Yeah, that's solid. Yep. Tom, can you back to the landscape plan for a minute? Yep. <clears throat> so that um, the changing area, how does one get to that? Through the sand okay. right here. So no path. Uh, that's the opening there. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, no plan on on having a path. I mean it's sand. Okay. Um yeah. And just to be clear, the the shade lounge you're seeing right under that is just sand. That you know, you're looking at the deck from there. The shade lounge is is just kind of under under the deck, which is sand. Right. Just so for this, its clarification. So this area here feels like a fairly nice open recreation area. And um, on the right hand side where it says enclosed area on the deck, I'm assuming the upper two, the upper two feet or the lower two feet are open. Yeah, two and a half. Two and a half. Yes. Okay. Uh, help me out here on the fence. Um, it's non-conforming. Uh, it's existing. Um, I have no idea how long it's been out there. Um, we're going to these uh, so much to try to get the fences to conform and and like about 70% of this doesn't. Um, you know, it's something that exists and and it provides some privacy. So I think and, and it's in reasonably good shape. So I think they wanted to keep it because once they start replacing it, then it does have to be open and provide for that. I think there's significant benefit to what they're proposing to do already. Um, yeah, I just, I can't recall from other projects we had where we came, uh, we were involved in a project and they had some fence that didn't conform and, and uh, uh, they came in for some new work, which in this case is, is major rehabilitation and or reconstruction. And uh, we have these fences that don't meet it. Well, we we also have to consider the fact that that fence may not be all theirs. Well, yeah, let's property um, line the property line parts of it. Yeah. Oh, actually, wait a second. Sorry. Yeah, actually, so the fence that fence is off property, and that fence is off property. But it, but it doesn't That's mean that that homeowner didn't put that fence up like a lot of other things yeah um but uh, i know in that last one with the with the generator uh installation they had a solid fence um and aerial photos showed it had been there for a long time um so we can always go back and look at uh the uh look at some aerials and see when that went up um yeah he did not put the fence up as confirmed by the homeowner. Uh, he did not put it up, but somebody before him did. And how long has he been there? Um, oh, over, he's been there for over 10 years and he, it wasn't, it was there prior to him buying the house. So the perimeter fence, the perimeter fence is solid and was there and would probably be tricky to change because it may or may not belong to both of them or the neighbor or whatever. But then the pieces are the are the pieces of the fence that extend into the property. Those are the, the pieces that are going to be brought into compliance. Yeah, that's so right here, the red is shown and it says proposed screen fence, see landscape plan and fence details. So yeah, yeah so this area here would be uh, brought into compliance here. But not on the other side of the house? 
Um, that's on the other side of the property line right here. But no, the one up here at the end of the driveway. Um, oh, 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 right here? Yeah, that's that's not gonna change, change as well. Um, George, are you gonna be able to build the house here and do all this and not touch that fence? We were hoping to, to keep the existing fence, um, but you know, obviously uh, we're gonna be, uh, have to do what the, the commission requires, uh, but the clients were hoping to keep the existing fence there. But yeah, absolutely, we'd be able to, to keep that there without damaging it. Okay. Um, so I guess that, that's the answer is, yeah, we believe we can, uh, we can do all that work and keep the fence there. Okay. What is this pr proposed enclosed area under the deck? Um, is that a, a, above, is that under like, what is that? So that would be, um, so you can see the, the skirting here. Mm -hmm. and let me take a look. This is the right side front. I know I saw somewhere hung storage. Yeah, so, yeah, there is a hung storage area that Inside. shows in the shows in the profile on the site plan, um, and I think that's back behind this skirting here. It is so more for it is more for storage, but we it would absolutely comply, you know, well with the regulation uh, being you know two feet up. But on the site plan, it shows as though it it is not underneath the house in that area, but maybe I'm wrong. Over on the right side, down, yeah, right there. Proposing that, closed area that under goes deck. all the way out to the footprint, exterior footprint. Okay. So what what is that? So let's see if that shows. George, is that is that an area that you're looking at having skirting down? Because I don't see that in here. From, I don't see it on here either. Front elevation, it would be it's like it, it's like enclosing underneath those pilings that's okay. correct that's correct so simply we would have some horizontal um encapsulation of those pilings conforming with you know the regulation just to add some um some more you know storage and whatnot maybe for kayaks or, or something like that so that would maintain the two and a half feet that absolutely right so that would just maintain two and a half feet across yeah. there we, we tried to put a landscape plan together to, to sh, you know, to, to put uh, forth effort for the commission to show, you know, what we were planning from a landscape plan rather than coming back later and mm -hmm. doing that. So there are some details on there that, you know, yeah. may not impact, you know, the application per se, but some additional detail we tried to show for the client for their, you know, future needs, such as, you know, storage of chairs or kayaks or whatnot, but of course it would absolutely comply. Mm -hmm. Tom, the, um, this, the configuration of the stairs on the landscape plan, they they don't match up with the configuration of the shares, stairs shown on the rear elevation. Uh, again, let's take a look. It'd just be nice if, if we had something that, it's it's gotta be consistent because- So I think- That's yes. a straight run uh, and on the elevation, it shows them going down to a landing and then, you know, in a, a two, two run. Okay, hold on a second. So that's the rear mm -hmm. elevation. Yeah, that that's, there. That's right here. That's a single run. There's a different set of stairs. It's the one on the other side. So you uh, this left maybe, side one? You know, maybe what we need is we don't have these elevations as part of the notice of intent. Right. Um, if you could just make sure that the elevations as to be constructed are consistent with the site plan that we have um, in every way. Right, the site plan would rule um, since, you know, since these weren't. Yeah, but we do I need the elevation. Want something right. Right. Because because it's but I, I did actually email to you, it was too late for you to expect you got it. And I just figured if, if you got it, you would have pulled it up. And if you didn't, you know, oh, well, I did the, the presentation plan and I added these into oh. it. So right. you have in your email, you should have a PDF and the last two pages will be these elevations. Yeah. So, okay. um, 
I think the confusion is it is a little bit if you look closely to the to the site plan as to the elevations so the that there's your double rung because you're looking at the elevation right, right, right in it, you're looking at the elevations flat and so what you're seeing in the elevation looks like it should be in the rear but it's not it's in the front right so that single run is on the site it is here obviously and it is also in the rear elevation because you turn around it's on the left as you look at the rear elevation there it is on the left hand side right right, right. so that's that single run and this I, is I got it I got it yeah. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm good I got okay. it thank you okay. all right thank you Okay, but I, I guess I'm still well, just a little bit stuck on this enclosed area under deck because we don't have other than this and the site plan, which doesn't say anything about it, doesn't say how, how it's going to be enclosed, what that material is, is it solid, is it open, how far down does it go, what those elevations are, and it's and it doesn't show up on the elevations that you just showed us. Um, so that's so Julia, that is correct. So it is on both the site plan and the landscape plan, right? So the site plan does include it. Uh, there's a, it's called out proposed enclosed area under deck, okay, on the site plan. Yeah, and then, it's just uh, that it doesn't, enclosed area under deck shouts out red flag to me. No, no, I understand. I'm not, yeah. I'm not arguing. Oh, is, it, is it on here? Is it in this? Um, right. Yeah, so right here, it shows the um, limit of skirting. And it does show that extending over into that area. Right. So it does show a limit of skirting at two and a half. Okay. Okay. On there. But I think um, if we're going to, prior to issuance, if we're going to update um, the landscape plan with like limits that need to be vegetated, um, you know, with like an outline of what has to be veg vegetated for compliance, we can also add two and a half feet clear under. Yeah. You know, to the text there to make sure it's clear. That would be great. But I do appreciate that you put together the landscape plan for this, um, for the notice of intent. It does help tremendously. So thank you for yeah, adding yeah. that in with this. I've had most clients don't have the bandwidth to think about right. landscaping when they're dealing with the house. They're, they're right. so stuck on how the house design is going to go and then landscaping is an afterthought. So. I, I like to have this level of detail too. Okay. Okay. Can I share my screen yet? Yeah. So or do you, do you want to show anything else? No, I think that's good. Okay. I'm just going to go back to what, what you had, but I just want to move forward. Okay. You don't have the pretty lines on yours, Julia. I, I know. Okay. But you can make them. You've got the highlighter tool too. Wait, it's cool. Yeah. Um, so do we have anything else for now? Are we uh express no. I, I think you know, just to, to recap, I mean it's it, it's a good project. It it increases vegetation as we've talked about. It takes a completely non-compliant site and certainly improves dune function substantially and we get things out of the AO zone, um, which is something that is clearly a goal of the, uh, of the ordinance and its regulations is tr try to minimize impacts in the AO zone and, and we achieve that. Okay. Commission, have any other questions? All right. Um, Anybody from the public? Any questions? Raise your hand. I don't see anybody from the public raising their hand. Um, so we want a continuance to the next meeting. That's a yes, right, Tom? Yeah, I mean, I, I was just trying to think. Um, we talked about getting things before issuance. Is there any chance of? Phony to issue and have a, having us get that beforehand, or do you want us to? Wait um, I, I think we we wanted to see whatever that screening fence was going to be first, um, and 
get some of these other things squared away. Um, I I wouldn't I, I wouldn't vote for a, to close the public hearings right now personally. Um, All right. Well, with that, I'd like to request a continuance to your next meeting. Motion okay. to continue to July 20th. Second. Uh, roll call, Paul Healy. Yes. Steve Moore. Yes. Dan Warshaw. Yes. David Vine. Yes. Ron DeCola. Yes. Carol Wagon. Yes. And I vote yes. Uh, Mr. Chair, if I just, yep. can I just clarify just to be sure? So we're going to add uh, the new, we're going to show you the new compliant fence. Uh, we're going to show the let's call it the consolidation of vegetation for lack of a better term right now. Uh, and then we're gonna mark a two and a half clear uh, on the under storage uh, on this slight plan so you can see it. And I think those are the three outstanding items. Okay, um, can we also get those uh, zoning uh, um, profiles? Oh, yeah, uh, the elevation. Yeah, they're, they're actually in, when Julia gets in tomorrow, they'll be in her inbox already, okay. um, but I'll send them as a standalone document. They're in with a presentation file that has okay. um, just the graphics. All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, thank hey. you. Thanks. Yep. Take care. Yeah. Uh, you got a motion to close the public hearings? Whoops, so move. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Um, all right, <clears throat> I think uh, only one, one other question I had was uh, for enforcement regarding the bike trail. Um, Steve, did you, get, did you get a chance to walk through there at all? I have not, no. No, I, I didn't get a chance to either. Um, so I guess uh, we should take a walk and see if, uh, see if Jerry has raised his priority to, uh, to actually do that. Um, he was supposed to have it done by last week, right? He was. Um, also, there was there was another uh, mile marker post added to the beginning of the trail on Hill Street, which was was not new and which is within the 25 foot no disturb as well. So I saw where um, he had a there was an article in the Daily News where he was looking for volunteers to come and help him spread the stone dust, I think it was. Yes, and that that he had approval to do. Yeah. Um, so that, at least on Hale Street, I know that's all spread, um, but I don't know what else he's been taking care of. And um, and I guess uh, Steve and I are gonna be working on a uh, bullet points for, uh, for the mayor. To, uh, to get her up to speed on all this. We are? Yeah, Steve, you missed, um, we, I, Joe and I were talking right before the meeting started that um, Donna called, gave me a call today and wants to help out sort of resolve this whole issue with Jerry, but would like um, just some more detail from you on what, what needs to get conveyed because obviously you two are more familiar with the fine points of what she should be requesting of him. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll get to work on that and get it to her ASAP. And uh, and I don't have anything else. Anybody I got, got anything else? I've got one question. Julia, were you able to talk to Paul Hogg about the, the shed? You know, I was starting diving into that today um, and was about to send him an email because I hadn't heard from him. And we got confused and I wanted to see if I could jog your memory before I send him uh, an email asking him. We got, we, he, we issued an order of conditions um, for him to elevate the structure essentially and bring it into compliance. But in the, um, in the order of conditions itself, the special condition says his plans, the, the plans that he presented to us showed it being elevated two feet up. But then the special condition that we issued requires him to have it 12 inches because he's in the AE zone and it's only required to be, as a shed, it's only required to be elevated one foot in the AE zone. 
And so, and, and I think it is elevated one foot and well, we wanted him to take it up to two. So I just wanted to try and see if you could, do you remember what that was about? I, I don't remember. However, I mean, that's a sloped site. So I, I would agree with you that the bottom part of the shed, the, the downhill portion is already a four, or maybe more above right. grade, but the front yeah. of it is right yeah. on the grade. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so it does then still need to be fixed. I was just, right. I just didn't want to email Paul and get get him all agitated if we had sort of changed our tune and uh, were, were allowing him to keep it at one foot. But even at one foot, it still needs to be elevated, is what you're saying. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Didn't we go so far as to get a plan from him and everything we did. else? I mean, yep. you know, there was yep. something that he left us with that was something he was going to do. Yep. Absolutely. Yep. I got it. I was looking at it today and that's when I, there was like this discrepancy between what we had, but now I understand this, our special condition still required him to implement that plan in order to get even the, um, to, to get all of it, at least a foot up above grade. Yeah. I just wanted to check with you before I, before I went after him. Okay. All right. How, how about this assessor, appraiser, and so forth? Is, is there some place we can leave this? I know the city solicitor, I, I remember talking about that on another project, and it was something that I was dis, that they were discouraging us to go to them unless we had a specific project. Yeah. And I'm just wondering if we couldn't just buy some time from a uh, appraiser or an assessor or, or somebody who is in this business. And, and again, I mean, I'm retired, so I will say this, but I spent a lot of my time as a geotechnical engineer. And, and uh, there's a lot of formulas that you can use to calculate settlement. And then the, with about 15 different settlement formulas, you can pretty much get different numbers depending on uh, how, how you approach it. And it just seems too squishy, this whole thing. And, and uh, I'm just concerned that we're going to get, uh, we're going to see more of these. Mm -hmm. I'm with you. Um, um, it, is it possible that we could go back to the cost and uh, have a, I mean, it seems like we have a nice budget going here and, and just to bring somebody in that knows it, I mean, mm -hmm. be a matter of hours. Uh, that there is, a, there is, an, a, when, when I spoke with Andy Port about this project and about us potentially wanting to do a peer review, he said, yes, he said that we can confirm with Culpeman and Page that, um, that a peer review can be required for this element of our work. And that um, they have a the, the city has worked with an appraiser in the past, and it's someone who that we could go back to for a peer review for Concom. Um, so there is someone who we could use at the, that the city is familiar with. Um, I don't think it's a bad idea, um, especially I think in a case where, unlike this one, maybe we end up with numbers that are really close, and that does happen quite frequently. Um, but I also think we need to look at the the our our regu our ordinance itself, or not our ordinance, but our regulations itself, and how it it lays that out because it is it it itself is a little squishy. You you would want any changes to to address some kind of standard for when you would want a second peer review or whatever another appraisal, and I don't I don't think it's in there now. So and so that puts a lot more burden, I think, on on us to make that decision, which maybe that's okay, but it'd probably be better if there were a criteria. Right. I mean, even the cost estimating uh, situation, I mean, that one gets kind of messy too. And it, and it seems like we get an awful lot of projects that are at 49%. And I mean, it doesn't cost much to bring in a cost estimator and someone who's experienced in this. and and just see what they say, as opposed to, uh, I mean, the way this thing is, the projects I've seen going for past us. It's true there, there's, I remember one cost estimate when someone chose to do the cost estimate versus appraised value approach, and they came in with a cost estimate that was like right at 49%. And then we said, well, aren't, 
why isn't this in this list of um, uh, costs? Where are the windows? And they said, oh, oh no, like they forgot that they had to put in the windows and that was gonna bump it up over 50%. So all of a sudden he comes in and says, well, I found out that I can get the windows from like a friend of my brother's for free or something. And all of a sudden then the windows don't matter anymore. And they write that down and it's like $0 for windows. And, you know, we don't really know what to do with that. Did, did they uh, let the IRS know that they got the windows? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Uh, but I mean, just, just like we have reviews for uh, the the management, uh, water management, it, 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 it or drainage and so forth, we can get somebody that we feel comfortable with to to step in without going through a whole rigmarole, or or even just yeah. to give us advice on how we lead this. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, we, we should do something like that. I mean, is there something like, can we make uh, at least uh, some steps here to at least go forward? I mean, we don't have to do yeah. it tonight necessarily. Is there? Yep. I, 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 I do think that that's the right thing to do. Um, and I'm not sure whether you want to, I can certainly, and I already have talked with people in our office about it and, and with regard to this particular project. But in moving forward, whether or not we can have some, whether we need to change the regs or whether we just have a contract that we can access um, a peer review on an appraisal whenever we need to, I don't know. Um, we might have a trigger when it's within a certain percentage. So if it's close enough to make people feel comfortable, maybe that could trigger the bringing in another professional or another opinion right right yeah, I, I'd, I'd rather bring in our own because i think what what we were looking into here was that lisa was going to come up with another appraiser and you know maybe she goes to three appraisers and the third mm -hmm. one is the one that uh you know is right is, that that's kind of there since they're paying for it that's kind uh, of their right but we i know in the past we have um convinced I don't know if it was her or somebody that, you know, we think this person should be the, the one doing it. Mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah, yeah, it should be our own. It should be our own outside peer review that we get to select. They, they might have to approve it if they pay for it, but otherwise it should be somebody who we select. Well, we should probably try and find somebody who has a good reputation mm -hmm. and is familiar with, New report, Plum Island, wherever. Um, well, it sounds like the city has somebody like that. We, we do. Well, and you indicated that he had someone who we could go to if we were going to do that on this case. Um, and we didn't end up doing it, but I'm sure we could next time. But I will just, um, I'll bring this up at our next meeting, our next staff meeting, and discuss it with our whole planning office team because it often affects a zoning um, decisions as well. So um, I'll just see what he thinks maybe the right approach is, whether we maybe we do both, we maybe we tighten up the regulation a little bit to provide a criteria for what for when a peer review can be asked for. Um, I, don't I mean, know. we can still use our appraiser and mm -hmm. charge them. I mean, it's yeah. not, it's yeah. not. Can we can do that? I assume we can. We I mean, oh, yeah. It's, for, I mean, that's I, what we're going to do. I, in this case. I assumed we could. If Joe, if you have a different opinion, I don't know. Uh, I mean, maybe I just thought, use our own person, but make the other make the uh, applicant pay for it. Yeah, I don't remember what the what that. Uh, um, Is that what we do? Of, part, of, part of the law is that there's some section fifty seven or something that or fifty five that we. Uh, we bring into play, which is which make yeah. it requires the applicant to pay for a okay. review. Yeah, okay. it's like section 53 or something like that. Yeah. Um, and we hire Christensen and Sergi as a stormwater engineer peer review on a lot of planning board special permit projects that then that helps the concom as well too but they're all they're just sort of our on staff peer reviewer and that happens a lot. So I'll, I'll ask them if we can get this 
person or this this appraiser, if they're good, to maybe just sort of be our go-to appraisal peer review. Um, or, and if or somebody comes in with a questionable cost estimate versus assessed value, maybe we could say, we're not going to accept this. We don't, we want you to do an appraisal. And then we, if we, if they do an appraisal, we have the ability to double check that with a peer review. Is, is the, <clears throat> the one method or another, is that, <clears throat> excuse me, just part of our regs? Um, the, part of the or, is that, or is that a state, is part of the ordinance? Part of the ordinance that we allow them to choose one or the other. Okay. Does that have to happen? Well, the city council specifically put the appraisal part in there. Oh, they did. Okay. So it's actually in the ordinance, not the regs. Yeah. yeah well, that was in uh, that was in the original Plum Island thing, right? The Plum Island ordinance. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, when we sent it to them, we we didn't have it in there. Uh, oh, and then they, they but they wanted it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it's the cost one that gives me trouble. This. You know, oh yeah, the cost was so hard to. You know, if you took that one out of there, then you know, I feel a lot more comfortable. But oh, just yeah, to have the appraisal. Gonna, yeah. Well, maybe that's something we could do. It's just. Well, there's also cost estimators, and again, it's the same idea. If if we have a question about a cost, we can bring in a cost estimator, mm -hmm. and I mean, we can. We can set up the ordinance to to say it and to uh, you know enforce it. Well, if we if we change the ordinance, we have to go back to the city council, and we've always been a bit reluctant. To yeah, I, I I would think we could try to see if we could just make it a change in in the regs that uh, if they use say the cost one and we don't like the cost, we can uh, bring ha, bring in a, a someone to review the uh, the cost estimate. Okay. It, does that have to be in the regulations or can that be a policy? That's what I'll find out whether or not, yeah, whether, I'm not, whether that it's I'm something not sure. that we can do under the section 53, whatever that is, or whether it's something that we need to write into the regs. I'll ask yeah. Andy. Or maybe we need to talk to Kobelman and Page about it. And, and along the same lines, um, also the, that cumulative uh, impact, you yes. know. Yeah. Uh, Something. Yeah, I'm surprised that that one got lost. Because I know we 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 pushed hard to uh, keep that in for all these things. So your 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 memory, Paul, is that the city council was against the idea of having something on the cumulative value? No, I think I have a feeling that was just uh, almost on the uh, uh, like a typo type of thing. Just an omission. Yeah, yeah. You know when you. When people have read those documents so many times and been through so many lawyers, um, it does happen. But I, I, I know the intent was uh, by, by everybody was to have it cumulative. There's, there's been an awful lot of new houses that cost seven figures and everything since then also. And there's been a lot more with climate change, sea level rise, et cetera. Yeah since then as well so i mean uh -huh. it 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 uh i i don't think we would have thought of it the same way then as we do now i know all of 20 years ago yeah <laughs> it is a different world yeah <laughs> Well, it'd probably be a good idea to deal with both issues at the same time so we don't have to go back oh yeah right. oh yeah 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 we just if, if we open up we have to have uh public hearings for uh, yeah. regulation changes. So um, just throw all that, throw all that in. And there are probably a few other things that we could throw in there too, I'm sure. And I can go through the regs and see if there are any other things that we could tighten up. Yeah, yeah. that would be good. Especially yeah, things yeah. like, even basic things like like submission requirements. We sh we're still asking people for 10 hard copies of notices of intent when really oh. we just want digital stuff from it. So like little things like that, we can also change oh. if, we bring, if we have a hearing. Uh -huh. Would it be good to do that before the city council changes over or do we want to wait? <laughs> well, they, it's the regulations are just up to us. We don't go to the city council. Oh, right? we don't? Oh. No. no. 
No, and it might be better afterwards anyways, but um, no, regs are just, just a public hearing by us. Um, it's the ordinance that, uh, since it's a law, yeah. that's gotta go to uh, okay. um, the council. Just like the feds, they write a law gets passed and then this, whatever the secretary, what whatever uh, agency uh, is given the power to write regulations. Right, they just have to be reasonable. Right. Well, the regulations are defined by the, the ordinance, right? I mean, the ordinance is the the overarching yes. yeah, framework and then the regulations fall, or they're designed to comply with the ordinance. Right, but they're the implementation implementation of the ordinance. And they can't right. over they can't overreach whatever it says. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because there's there's always that little gray line, uh, you know, was uh, you know, have we gone too far? And in, in in essence, creating a law by ourselves. Yeah. But um, but those th those things get hatched out by you know going through a city solicitor. Yeah. Oh. All right, we got anything else? Motion to adjourn. I'll second that. Um, oh, we can just, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Great. Ron, Aye. welcome. Welcome to the uh, one, one no vote club. Yeah. <laughs> Wanted to do it. <laughs> It's a good one. It's a good one to oh, do. Well, I'd say thank you. <laughs> I'm glad it wasn't unanimous. I, 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 I kept going back and forth myself. Well, you could have said no. I know I could have. I, I just felt like they did what, the, what we asked, so I left it. See you on the 20th, everyone. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.